Hello, 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 and welcome to Crate Now. We're doing a guitar episode right now, and we're going to talk about string jumping. So, we're going to need an old plectrum for this one. We're going to mostly just concentrate on the G chord. So all we're going to do is just play the big E string, we're going to do a G chord, and we're going to do hit the big E string down and hit the little E string up. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. That's all there is to it. But the hard thing is getting that string accuracy down so that you hit the same one every time. So you might just be going like one and two and three and four around, which would be the same pattern as a kick snare, like the disco. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So that, these are octaves, very good for bass, okay? We need a string jump for those ones. So, let's do some octaves. Um, we're gonna hit, hit the, yes, yeah, we're, we're jumping a lot of strings here, the entirety of the, the middle section here. So, big E string, giving that knock on the top of the head there, and plucking the bottom of the little uh, E string. G chord. Now let's move on to the E chord. Just two E's. Big E, little E, big E, little E. Now it's very, very important to, to, when you're hitting that little E string to make sure you're hitting the bottom of it because you need a down up motion. You can't be going like down, down, and then up. It's very, or it's not flowing. It's like swinging and then kind of you're jerking it. So you're trying to just keep the keep the flow going. Now if you want to sound really cool, you mute the the big E string with your palm. So palm muting. Once again, palm muting is when you use the underneath of your palm on your picking hand. You just put it right up to that bridge, and then you slide it closer and closer on to, onto the string. String reduces resonance, so you get a very choked sound. It's very big in, in the 80s and hair metal, all this string jumping, stuff like that. Maybe that's math rock. I can't remember. But it sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? of the down up strum. So if you remember we were counting to four and we had uh, one, two, three, four all down strums. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. And then when we want to play on the hands we did our up strums. So it's the same exact same motion except we're only hitting one string. <laughs> Same. And the reason when I do it, it sounds so tight and polished is because all the, the choking I have. When I do it the strings don't ring out because I'm constantly muting the sound with both my palm so that the strings don't ring out as long. Get the choked sound. That sustain isn't there. Palm muting is very, very, very important. And then we have fretting hand muting, which is where after you hit the note, you simply remove the pressure from the string and it chokes it. So all we're doing is just relaxing the hand. So it's not sustaining because I'm choking the note. And how am I choking the note? By releasing the pressure. Alright, 
Chunk. Alright, down up motion. Reserving your energy. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. So let's say, this is actually a two octave jump. Which you know, is a bit mad. So if you want to just keep it, keep it simple, keep it fresh. We so you want to do a, a one octave jump. What we're going to do is for that E string, we're only going to pluck the E string in the bottom of the D string. All right. So we're only jumping over the A string. Okay, this is octave jumps. One and two. Same as doing the full strum down up, okay? But it's a, it's not as, not as much movement. Make sure you don't have any tension. Just above that elbow is probably where you're feeling that tension in the upper upper arm. You, your the guitar may not be at the, the right angle for you. I'd recommend it uh, up as high as you can. <laughs> And um, as regard up as high as you can towards your towards your head, does that even make sense? And um, the sound hole on this guitar, for example, is above my belly button, and it's it's just quite high up on on me. Like the strap is quite small, I guess. Fastened quite well. It's not the guitar isn't hanging around my ankles. Does that make make it any easier for you? So this is just um, uh, an extension of the hybrid picking, which we discuss as well, which is just down up. I'm just going down up here on the E string, which I'd quite highly recommend you, you do. So if you can, just do this with me. Just do down up picking on the E string. And just get that going. This is proper wake up first thing in the morning kind of workout. Just that big E string. And I'm also palm muting it as well. You have to be very, very careful not to mess up your whole hand when you're palm muting because when you're trying to go this fast but also restrict the movement in a way, you can really mess up, mess things up. So here's no palm muting. And here's the old, the old palm muting. And the closer I get um, to the fretboard with my, with my plucking hand, the more muted it gets. Can you hear that? Good for bringing out all those mad harmonics. This was a, like a distorted guitar reef wailing right there. So um, if you wanted, if you thought this was kind of cool and you wanted, if any have a distorted guitar or something, this is how red. So you're just, you're just going down up on one string and then lightly touching the top of the string of the with your fretting hand and moving up and down. So this is based on the harmonics, okay? So you get harmonic by plucking the string and ever so slightly just resting the fingertip on top of the string. You're not pressing it down at all. You're just resting the fingertip on it. So the string has to be still able to, to uh, do its full cycles, full spin things. So you press down too much, you won't be able to spin and you'll just get a dead sound like Alright, so only one finger, preferably do it on a, a fret above, directly above the fret. Alright, not in, it's not like fretting the fretboard, this is right on, hovering on top of the fret. So the loudest harmonics are the 12th fret, to do with the divisions of the neck. So halfway, a third, which is the 7th fret, and a quarter, is it a quarter? I can't remember my maths. Um, which is the 5th fret. One, two, three. Sure, I'll go with that. Yeah, a divide in quarters is the fifth fret, and thirds is the seventh fret, and it doubles up behind the. It doubles up on the on the opposite side, so it's like it's like a bridge. That's harmonics anyway. 
some people really like it, and then you can do mad shit like uh, bend them. A lot easier if you have a whammy bar, but no one wants a whammy bar. They won't, your guitar won't stay in tune if you have a whammy bar. Nice general statement there. If anyone has a whammy bar, I'd recommend you stick a block of wood in there and block it off. Personally, I have no time for them. They're a lot of fun, especially those Floyd Roses. But the, the guitar just it can't stay in tune a lot of the time. Uh, so personally, and the guitars that I work on or whatever, I, you just stick an old plank of wood in behind the, it's called hardtail and the strap, you just you stick a, a bit of wood in the back where it, the spring and a bit of metal that move around when you pull down the whammy bar and you jam a bit of wood in behind the metal so that the springs can't move and all this stuff. Uh, no sorry, it's actually called a sustain block, so it helps with the sustain. But you kind of lose that natural reverb sounds that you get from the springs and the strat, so... Ooh. I'm not ready for it, I don't really. I'm a telecaster man myself. I'm talking about different styles of uh, guitar. Which you don't worry about. We'll just stick to we'll stick to the old guitar. So anyway, if you ever thinking, oh man, I got a few seconds to play here. Do these down up. jumping. You don't even need, we'll just, we'll, let's just practice, I've, I was throwing a lot at you, but we'll try and keep it even, even simpler. Alright, we're just going to do the outer string, so big E to little E. Alright, do it at your own pace, you don't have to do it as fast as me. This is just the exercise, this is what I want you to focus on, just keep stuff very, very simple. So we only have open strings going on here with the, the placky hand. We're just hammering the top of the big E and the bottom of that little E. Now, when you're ready, we're going to close in. So we're going to do the A string and B string and bounce between those two. You ready? Go for it. A and B string. That's that tight muted sound. And then the sustaining sound. So that just has to do with how much your palm is touching the, the strings. And every so often you'll hit the occasional wrong note. Like I, every so often I hit the G string by accident. Oh, there's a cheeky E string by me. <laughs> By, you know, you and all the other strings like I'm doing right now. So this way, even if I hit up all the strings, uh, only the the B, uh, the A and E B will be ringing out because all the other strings muted with my fretting hand. But I'm just gonna keep it loosey goosey. So this is just one hand once again, just the right hand. Okay. So this is great string jumping. A bit more ambitious, you can just keep one chord on. How does that sound like? It sounds like a proper. I was walking down the woods, yeah. That's the G, that's the G chord used in the. picking on the A string and B string, so I'm gonna switch the two A strings. Oh, yeah, singing a song. Same chord. Back to the A and. Strings there. Now I'm gonna switch to the middle two strings. So that's D and uh, G. Again, the different textures out of one chord. Right. Let's just focus on the middle two strings here. We're talking about the D and G string, okay? Look on those two strings. D and E. And up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. 
use a little bit of muting if we need to. Now, ideally you'll have a metronome going, clicking, clicking away for you. Um, you can go on metronome.com or one of those things that I said. One of those things. Alright. So we'll just select through that again, I guess. Alright, middle two strings. Back down. The next type of strings, which are the A and B. So, pick accuracy. You don't have to do it as, as fast as me, and you might even be noticing, oh man, I'm a. Uh, looking at it all the time. If you can, you'll hopefully know by your ear. You'll just hear if you hit a wrong note. And this is... Your pick accuracy will be very nice when you do this. For all your finger picking and stuff, this is the kind of stuff you need to be... It's, you can use your fingers if you want, and that's fine. But this is how you just become really, really tight with that plectrum and pick accuracy and you can do all these interesting arpeggio patterns or whatever just by hitting the not the usual strings instead of starting off by hitting the big the lowest string in the chord you could just be picking on the two middle strings and people are like whoa what's that man how did you get that sound oh i'm just picking the two middle strings of this chord it sounds pretty cool here's just the middle here's the middle strings on the a chord that sounds pretty good Here's the D and the next two outer strings. It's very cool for building tension. So that's the A and B string on the A chord. And then the outer two. Sounds good. Now that pan mute really helps. Because if you don't pan mute, everything just starts breaking out all the time. Which is fine if you're... Fine if you're. I can't remember, sorry. <laughs> yeah, just keep up, up that picking um, and be responsible by playing, you know, with a metronome or something. Um, and if it's just music playing or the TV playing, this is all you need to be doing. Just tick, 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 tick easy as that. You might get away with that if there's someone else in the room. Especially if you double, if you pan mute with bow hands. You'd be doing this watching the film, no bother. And then when the music starts playing, you just play along in time with it. So that was just me rocking out on that B string. So just getting that, getting your errors up. Um, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. There you are. The E string, outer strings, next inner strings, and middle two strings. Oh, that's very good. Right. Uh, I'm gonna play a little passage just with some bar chords. I'm just gonna go like A, C, G. Okay, I'm just going to pick the middle two strings and you can hear all the different sounds you can get out of them. It's the same chords and everything. So A, C, G, but I'm just going to focus on picking the outer strings, the two E's for this one. Here we go. Alright, same chords. Now we're going to go in to the A and B string. Okay, these are bar chords by the way, but don't worry about that. Going in. Um, cool. And then finally the middle two strings.
getting a bit carried away there. But that's mixing up palm muting with I was incorporating think, uh, string jumps. Kind of randomly enough string jumps, but there's there's only really three notes to choose from. You know, you got your your in the A chord, you got three different notes, which is the one four one three five in the major, which is of course A. D flat and E. So you're only really just picking from those three notes on different octaves. So yeah. it breathes a whole new bit of life to uh, some to new chords. Just just changing up that picking pattern. It's it can be really good for you know verses building the verse. Uh, what was that? It's fucking... Yeah, you probably get the idea. It, just, it breathes so much life into old music. Alright, so down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Metronome if you can. Get those hours up. You really need to. The more tense your arm is, the more you're gonna wreck yourself. Um, here's some here's some exercises you can do. You can pull your fingers back with your hand. Uh, I'll check this with your doctor or something like that beforehand. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you can see this motion. I'm pull. Uh, you're I'm pulling my fingers back anyway a little bit. Uh, I guess you guys can't really see this, but just massaging your hands and stuff. Just, just squeezing the crap out of your arms to get it, help get rid of that tension can really help. Um, like weightlifters and all this stuff get massages to help with all their business and, and things. Alright, we're just trying to be aware of repetitive strain. You won't really get repetitive strain in my experience unless you're kind of stressed out and all tense and that's when all the problems happen. And it's kind of like a vicious cycle so. Who knows? Tech, technique and so on will really help with uh, repetitive strain issues and exercises. Alright, have a great day. That was String Jumping Extreme. Vegan Steven, check out all the links down below. Subscribe. And there's an audio version of this live on iTunes, Spotify, and all that stuff. Vegan Steven Music on Instagram, uh, Twitter, Vegan Steven Pod, P O D. Twitter, TikTok, Vegan Steven Music, and everywhere else. Have a great.